So thank you all for being here. Uh, Pete and I founded this organization after his open heart surgery. He went in for a routine physical in 2015, and I'll never forget the phone call when he called me on my cell and said, there's something wrong with my heart. And his voice was shaking, and we really didn't know anything. So of course I rushed home. He told me that the doctor had heard a heart murmur, something he'd mentioned to me in the past because it had been heard at DOT physicals as well as when he was a teenager. He said, the doctor said it's probably nothing, but he wants me to get an echo. I said, what's an echo? Echocardiograms like a sonogram, like when they look at the babies. And I said, okay. So he goes for the echocardiogram, and several days later, we get the call. And I was sitting in my office, and his office is across the hall. And I heard him say the words, a five centimeter aortic aneurysm and aortic stenosis that will require surgery. So I heard him say those words, and of course, where did I go? I started Googling. Don't Google. Um, and read what it was, and he hung up the phone, and we just kind of sat there for a while. You get that feeling where everything goes numb. Your knees give out, your legs give out. Of course, I had, I had Googled it, and you hear the words open heart surgery when one day ago you were completely healthy. We didn't know what to do. We were very fortunate that Pete had an amazing primary care doctor, he called in, he goes, I can't wait two weeks for somebody to call me. I need to see you now, I need to get in today. So we got into the clinic that day and his doctor, Dr. Prasanna, who is somebody that I will respect and admire for my entire life, before he even sat down, he walked in the door, he said, Pete, this is a good thing. We found it and it's all fixable. He sat down, he threw some pictures, what it looked like, which, which will freak you out anyways when you see that your aorta that's supposed to be the size of a garden hose is the size of a can of Coke. Um, but he talked us off the ledge. And so many people don't get that. The initial call we had from the nurse said, someone will call you in two weeks to make an appointment with a cardiologist, click. And that's where they leave you hanging. Rock from the Heart's mission is to not leave anybody hanging. When they hear those words, aortic aneurysm, aortic valve disease, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, when they go Googling, we want them to find rock from the heart. We want them to find stories of hope. We want them to find you. We want them to find our YouTube channel with educational videos. We want them to find the survivor stories. Aortic aneurysms and aortic valve disease touch everyone, whether they know it or not. You may have read about a celebrity who died suddenly from one of them. Maybe you have a relative who learned too late that he or she suffered from one of these heart diseases. Or you could be very familiar with the conditions having been diagnosed with one or survived a surgery to correct one. A diagnosis of aortic aneurysm or aortic valve disease changes your life. And Rock from the Heart, our mission is to help you on that journey. So go back on that call. Those first few hours and days are hard from the person diagnosed standpoint and the people who love them. You get that diagnosis, you react in the same way other people do. First, panic. I'm scared. Confusion. How did this happen to me? Can it be fixed? Paralyzed by fear. That, that's where I was. I was paralyzed with fear as the wife. Am I going to have a husband? in a couple months. Can we plan for the future? What happens next? I remember when Pete would take naps in the two years before his surgery where I would walk into the bedroom just to make sure that he was breathing because you just, you didn't know. There was so much fear and, un, and confusion and, and information that wasn't always clear. The future, Am I, what's the future gonna look like? How will it affect my life? Am I gonna die younger than expected to? Pete's words, am I gonna be able to still drum? Can I play my drums? All those reactions are universal, they're understandable, but there's help and there's resources. And really these connections that you can make is what kept us going. Music kept us going in those two years. We went to as many concerts as we could, we had music in the house all the time, tried to keep ourselves sane. So what is it that we're trying to do here? We're trying to get people access to experts. We, we all hear it, I've mentioned it already. Don't Google your symptoms. Google's easy, it's out there, but the internet isn't the best place to find 
helpful, credible information when you're looking for support. So it shouldn't be your first stop when you're diagnosed, but we all know it is. Um, there's also many support systems, people telling their stories. Aortic disease is different for everybody. What is going on for somebody else may not be right for you. I, I always made the joke, it's like, you go to the internet and somebody says, you know, I've, my fingernails are growing really fast. Could that be because of my aortic aneurysm? You know, my, my farts smell like broccoli. Is that a symptom of aortic disease? You just, everything, they want to relate to this. And it doesn't, it's not always the case. Just because a, set of, a stranger set of symptoms mirrors yours or a particular drug worked for them doesn't mean it's your solution. Aortic aneurysms and heart valve are too serious. Heart valve disease are too serious to find your answers on the internet. So when you've been diagnosed with aortic aneurysm or heart valve disease, it's really easy to feel alone, especially when you are alone and your fearful thoughts are spiraling. When you come to rock from the heart and spend the day in the company of patients, families, medical professionals who want to connect and share stories, this is a relaxed environment to just be yourself for a day, learn from the experts, and make those connections. We added the dinner piece and the cocktail reception because it's great to learn and get all the information. Now we need to just wind down and just spend time with each other in a relaxed environment. We listen to each other, we ask questions, we can find like-minded people who are struggling with their diagnosis and get encouragement from surgery survivors. And in many cases, they're to comfort families who've lost someone to aortic disease because as much as we like to talk about the survivor stories, the unfortunate fact is people are still undiagnosed, misdiagnosed, and we're still losing people to aortic disease. So when we do these symposiums, we record everything, and after the event, we're going to take all the videos and we're going to break them up into chunks. I call them digestible chunks because nobody wants to go on YouTube and watch five or six hours worth of video, right? So we'll put them up on our YouTube channel. And then when I see somebody online that has a particular question about how do I choose is, do I do a you know, TAVR surgery or do I get a mechanical valve or biological valve? We can maybe direct them to one of the presentations where a professional talks about how you can make those decisions. We have our website and our social media. Um, our website's worth exploring. We're always updating it, changing it, making it as user-friendly as possible so you can learn more about our mission. You can find links to aortic disease information and resources. You can read survivor stories, and you can share your own. You can look through our blog. I'm, part of what I'm reading today is the Rock from the Heart story told by our, one of our newest volunteers, Kathy, who is living with an aortic, dissect, uh, aortic aneurysm right now. She's at 4.3 centimeters. She's been, so she's pre-surgery. She's been writing this blog for us and coming from that perspective of living with the disease, she's helping us write this great content from the perspective of somebody who's living it. If you have skills that you'd like to share with us, we are always looking for more volunteers to help. There's just many ways you can get involved and we would try to find, you know, based on what your skill set is, a place for you within the organization. And then we've got the healing power of music. Once you spend this Friday with us learning and sharing and gaining a better understanding of aortic disease, Take tomorrow, explore Fargo-Moorhead, right? Everybody who comes to town wants to go to the wood chipper and see that if you're a fan of the movie Fargo. And then you can learn where the rock from Rock from the Heart comes from. I think one of my favorite things at the tour center is walking around and looking at all the sidewalk chunks of all the artists and the bands who've played in town. I could spend, I could spend hours just reading each of those little cement sidewalk blocks out there. And get involved. This is our sixth year. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe that we did this for the first time on a whim in 2019. What started as an idea at P in Pete's hospital bed to maybe just have a, one of his bands play at the local Legion turned into booking the band Night Ranger, whose drummer had also had aortic valve replacement surgery that year. We booked a theater in Minneapolis and added a symposium on Friday, and, and we've been doing it ever since. Your help helps us have more impact as the years go on. I would like to just bring up Pete for a few words because I think having him just take one moment to share what his ideas and why he started this 
would be just fantastic. So I'm going to put him under the gun because he's really good. He was on, you might have seen him on North Dakota today, this morning, and that was fantastic. So uh, Pete Johnson. Well, this is unplanned. <laughs> And she is vertically challenged, but she's got a big heart, yeah, so that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, first off, in that video that we watched earlier at the end where I go, Pete Johnson, hard guy, that, that was a joke, and the guy who made the video loved it and left it in there, and I turn red whenever that part comes on when we play that video because it's kind of silly. But uh, it, it's turned into a funny thing to tease me about. Uh, Rock from the Heart started really in my hospital room after I had my open heart surgery. I got a new heart valve, and uh, they cut out a hunk of a, my aorta because I had an aneurysm growing, and that was going to uh, rupture soon. And uh, they cut that out, and they put a graft in. So that, that's what I've got going and then this pretty nurse came in, and I was all happy, and she said, uh, we're going to have to do another surgery on you. <laughs> what? And I think I experienced uh, clinical depression for the first time in my life. Uh, you know, I thought I'd felt bad in my life a couple times, but when that pretty nurse told me I needed another surgery, I really felt horrible. So I had a bonus surgery and got a pacemaker put in. Now, I'm a drummer, so my bandmates tell me that I drum better that I have a little help to keep me on time now it's I don't know if that's true or not but you know we we just thought well there's something maybe musical that we could do like Amy said maybe one of my groups I'm lucky enough to play with we could do something at the Legion and maybe have have a little heart and model and talk about hey you can still play drums after having heart surgery well yeah that turned into Let's get Night Ranger, too, because their drummer had a heart surgery, just like mine, real similar. And, uh, boy, when they said yes, we thought, well, geez, we got a rock show on our hands. Can we do this again next year? And we tried it again a couple of years. And then, geez, I'm from Fargo. I lived here for 35 years, moved to Minneapolis in 2010. But, yeah, I went to Fargo North. Uh, my first job was at Shotwell Floral. I put the plants to sleep at night by... Uh, dragging big tarps over them over these little clotheslines it's a cool job for a kid i made five bucks a night doing it so an extra 25 bucks a week to uh buy kiss records with uh so let's try rock from the heart in fargo so we did and it was uh a total blizzard about four people showed up for the symposium who had four-wheel drives and understanding families, you know, they might not come home again. And, uh, last year, we moved it to May. Said, no more Februarys in Fargo. What were we thinking? But we came back in May, and here we are again. Uh, we're real happy that you came out. Come to the concert tomorrow night. Uh, we got the beat. The Go-Go's Gina Shock's going to be playing drums with uh, the opening act, Aortic Fire right next to me, so I'm kind of nervous because she's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame drummer and I'm the guy who bought Kiss Records at Mother's Records up the street and uh, I don't want to let her down, so I got my work cut out for me. But uh, thanks for coming, appreciate it. You know, for, for, for Pete and I, Rock from the Heart really is a labor of love. We both have full-time day jobs. He's, he drives school bus, and I am a substitute teacher and run my company and run Rock from the Heart. So everything we do is from our hearts. It's on our own time, and it's, it's a labor of love. Our goal is to continue to grow, to make the connections. If Pete once explained it one day. He goes, we want to be there when they fall. When, when somebody gets a diagnosis or loses somebody, we want them to immediately be able to go. The place we all go right these days is, is the internet, whether it's on social media or, or Google. And we, we bring that to, is there something wrong? Oh, good. Okay, now can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? 
but but again, to have that that soft landing because there's nothing worse than feeling alone. There's there's nothing worse than getting a diagnosis that changes your life immediately and permanently, and feel like you're the only person in the world who's dealing with that. Um, in this room today, John Hudgens, who was our announcer, he worked at a company called Abbott, but that wasn't how we met him. He's a keyboardist in one of the bands Pete plays with. So the people in this room, not everybody's affected by aortic disease. They just saw the importance of this and wanted to be a part of it. Because of that connection, we were able to learn and actually got a tour of Abbott because Pete's got a St. Jude mechanical valve in the St. Jude region, and we got to tour Abbott where his valve, they, we took the serial number of his valve, we toured the plant, and Pete got to meet the team that made his heart valve. They'd, they'd never met somebody that was like wearing their product, shall we say? And it was one of the most emotional moments, I think, of, of my life, when each of them put their ear to Pete's heart and listened to that mechanical click that was keeping him alive. Pete, Pete's daughter was with us, and she was just in tears. But what a gift. And I know that one of our one of the company that's supported us for years, Edwards, does a really great patient recognition every year. And I always love those pictures when they've got all of these people who are survivors in a room together and gathering. And we just want to keep that feeling and collaborate with other organizations and get the word out there so that we make more of those connections. Um, how can you help? You know, of course, the support of the community is what keeps us strong. So some of you saw that outside in the lobby, you know, now and throughout the day, we've got some, you know, swag, we've got some t-shirts and some items out there. On, on each of the tables is a QR code where you could make a donation to, to help us continue to grow our mission. There's also a QR code on the back side of the card if you're interested in volunteering that will take you to a sign up form on our website to give, get us your information. We're always looking for additional you know, sponsors to help us support the event and auction donations. We do some several online auctions during the year as well as at the events. Attend, be in the room. We're not only just in this room, but we are live streaming right now because we know not everybody can be here. So it's live streamed and recorded. So you can be here, you can watch us virtually, or you can watch the recorded videos afterwards. Um, follow us, grab your phone right now and go onto your Facebook, your Instagram, find Rock From The Heart, give us a follow. Help us get, we're getting real close to 4,000 on Facebook and we wanna get that number up. Um, it really does work, it's great. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is where our content will get posted. Um, before I just blather on all day, I just want to finish kind of with this. Um, managing aortic disease takes courage, knowledge, optimism, and a willingness to share and ask for support. So wherever you are at in your journey, we'd like to help. Contact us if there's something you'd like to see on our website, and keep checking back in. We have new content all the time. And as Pete says, call him, the hard guy. He has talked to more than one person who we found online who is recently diagnosed. And he's been that, that doctor persona, personality who can help to talk them off the ledge because most people don't have that person that's gonna get them in the day they get the call and sit them down, explain what's going on under the hood and, and talk you off the ledge and help you just breathe. It just helped us to breathe. You have a place in our community, and we're glad you're here. So thank you. We'll enjoy the day. I'm going to be done now. I love to talk, but I've had enough. It's <laughs> so we've got a great lineup of speakers. The agendas are on your table, and let's, let's learn, connect, and love. Thank you.